So Father Leon, I heard uh, about your story in Medjugorje and you are a priest, who, you are a Dominican priest, right? You live in Medjugorje, right? I do, I'm the chaplain for the English speakers. Okay. And why did you come to Medjugorje in the first place? In the first place? That's going back a while. I, I came back to the Catholic faith properly because of Medjugorje. I had a conversion through Medjugorje and I also owe my vocation to it. So I came here for the first time when I was 20 years old, and maybe so three years after recovering my faith. And um, I came Thanksgiving, I, I was in the army. I'm from Singapore where we have national service, you see, the military service, compulsory military service. And I broke my spine and all that, and it's a long story. But when I recovered as an act of Thanksgiving, I came to Medjugorje, that was the first time, in 1991. Okay, and I heard you had an encounter with Our Lady. <laughs> he dies straight in, don't you? Um, you say encounter with Our Lady. We all encounter Our Lady when we pray the Rosary, when we when we're faithful to Holy Mother Church to the faith. But yeah, I, I think you're alluding to um, an experience I had here. I admit I I wasn't expecting this. I I don't I certainly don't think people should go looking for this sort of thing, but. But I have to admit, I, I saw a young girl made of orange golden light standing on that mountain, Krijavats Cross Mountain, on the 11th of September 1991, about four in the morning, from four to between four and six. It was for a good while. I don't know how long it counts. <laughs> you also interview me late in the evening, so I can't think so clearly. But it was for a good while. I saw this young girl who was her face, hands, clothes, all made of orange golden light. And how I know it's Our Lady, that's also part of the story. Um, I, when I saw this girl, I didn't know what it was. It. <laughs> didn't know who she was. Um, but I was with someone else, my friend Kevin. Um, and Kevin is a year younger than I am, so at that time, he was 19, I was 20. And we saw this light. And it stunned us into a silence. We prayed the rosary while walking towards it, just in case whatever this might be was evil. You know, so that, let's say our prayers. But we felt no fear watching this girl. And it's later on, so this is between 4 and 6 in the morning, then we climbed the mountain, but she wasn't at the top. And we thought that she, she had moved to the other mountain. Potbordo, Apparition Hill, and she was standing where today there's a statue that marks the place where Our Lady first appeared. Um, this girl, and there was no statue in those days. The statue is only 20 years old, and this is 30 years ago. So, but the same girl was standing on that spot, and you could tell it was because everyone had taken soil from that area where Our Lady appeared. You see, so it was clear, and this girl was illuminating that area by just standing there. But she was facing the parish this time, but her hands in the same position, you know, like, like the Immaculate Conception, you know, with the palms open, but not, um, didn't look anything like the statue of Our Lady or any picture of Our Lady um, that I've ever seen. A young girl. And um, so when we saw she was on the other mountain, we realized we picked the wrong one. So anyway, we said our prayers, etc., and came down the mountain went into the church and that's where the second half happened where I, I heard a voice speaking inside me which also I didn't expect I wasn't even I went to stand facing the statue of Our Lady in the church the church was mostly empty just me and Kevin and one priest in there the first mass had just finished and people had left and um, I this, this voice started speaking I've never had such an experience before in English, a woman's voice, and um, I mean, it all just sounds so mad, really. You know, first I see a, a, a young girl made of orange golden light, then I hear a voice. You know, if people say that sort of thing, usually you lock them up or you treat them with medication. So I never expected these things. But the voice inside me, this woman just started speaking, and she described my life to me. No introductions to begin with, just began straight away describing my life to me. And first of all, she was far more positive than I would have been. 
And, um, but she also told me my sins, every single one. And it felt like it took about two hours, you know, on uh, just her telling me my life back to me and my sins. <laughs> and the sins slowed her down. Um, and when she finished, she said, you are happy because you've seen me. So I thought, ah, it's the girl on the mountain. So I said, yes, I'm very happy. Who are you? And she said, I am your mother, the mother of God. I want you to tell everyone you meet that I am their mother and that I love them. So that was it. That was the introduction. And she made me feel what she was saying. I don't know how else to describe that, but the words, whatever she said, almost everything she said, she made me feel in what sense she meant them. So when she said, tell everyone you meet, she meant as though I could run out in the street ecstatically telling people, Mary loves you. At the time when she said it, it seemed to make perfect sense. And I thought, yes, I could do that. And when she said that I love them, that I am their mother, she meant as though, as though she had physically given birth to everyone. I say physically because there was a sense like we have cost her something, like she's claiming us. I can't call it possessiveness, but I claim us. And then when she said, and that I love them, it's like she embraced me to show me how. It's a very powerful love. Um, and there's no point resisting it, you know. There's, we can say you're unworthy and all that. And of course we are, but she, she loves us like this. You know, what are you going to do? Um, and then she said near the beginning of the conversation, do not begin to imagine that you deserve to see me. God gives grace as he chooses. So right at the beginning, she said, don't worry, you don't deserve this. Don't worry about it. Uh, but I still did. For years, I used to think, what does this mean? When, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm unworthy. But she didn't, at the beginning, she said, don't worry about it. Um, and then there's a few other things she said. They, they mostly, they mostly concern me. She never asked me to become a priest or a religious, she never mentioned that. That would have made life easier if she had, but she never did. I told her all of my problems, which were really a lot at that time. And she said, give your heart to Jesus, pray with a firm faith, surrender your life to Jesus. Then, um, yeah, the rest of it really doesn't concern anyone else. She did say at the end of the conversation, she said, do not go looking, she told me not to go looking for her because I would not see her if I did, but that she would come for me when I'm dying, if I live a good life. That, you know, it's not guaranteed, but it's, you know, that's how the conversation ended. And when it finished, even then, I have to admit, I was still, I was very perplexed. You know, I just thought, what was that? What? On my watch, 20 minutes had gone by and it felt like four hours altogether, you know, had been taken up with this conversation. But, and we spoke, she did most of the talking. We, we spoke about all kinds of things. I, I didn't have the um, freedom or ability really just to say whatever I wanted. You know, you can't, you, you can't describe it, but you can't just say anything frivolous. Um, and I don't mean out of a sense of propriety. I mean, you really physically can't even say something frivolous. She won't let you. So, you know, she she controlled the conversation and she did most of the talking. You know, it's in many ways quite businesslike. And although I would say certain things, her response was not did not always seem like a response. I don't know. That is a strange part of this conversation, I think. You know, it's like... Sorry, go on. Did she speak inside of your heart? Or, uh, you, you in my heart or in my mind, I don't know, a voice inside me, a clear voice, okay. speaking in English, a woman's voice. And uh, um, so now you became priest after this encounter and you said... No, no, no. I know after that encounter I went to university, I became a doctor. I oh, went to medical school and became a doctor. Okay. And then after that I joined the Dominican Order. <laughs> 